this is synthesis of bromoethane. I have here 126 milliliters of ethanol, and in the addition funnel, I have 140 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. I have this on an ice bath. This has been chilled down to a little below 5 degrees Celsius, and this has been chilled in the freezer as well. So I'm going to add it slowly and not let the temperature of the alcohol get above 40 degrees Celsius. It took me about 40 minutes to add all of the sulfuric acid, and after addition of it, the solution took on this pinkish type hue here. So now I'm going to set up for simple distillation. So here's my distillation setup. I have the ethanol and sulfuric acid in the same flask. I have one of them capped off, and this one I'm going to add the sodium bromide to. Um, with the still head and a the thermometer, a condenser, uh, and I'm pumping cold ice water through there. And I have the receiving flask. Inside the receiving flask is 25 milliliters of cold distilled water, and that flask is also placed on an ice bath, and this will help minimize any evaporation of the bromoethane. And the water will, should also help to absorb any hydrogen bromide gas that might come over. And uh, any that's not absorbed will be vented out this hose out the window. So I have 120 grams of sodium bromide. And I'm going to be adding this to my reaction vessel. After adding all of the sodium bromide, I didn't notice uh, an immediate reaction, just a, a slight small bubbling. Um, it's still cool, and I expect as it heats up that uh, the reaction rate will increase. So after about 10 minutes, I still didn't notice any reaction. And I thought this might have to do with the cold temperature and also the limited solubility of potassium, uh, excuse me, sodium bromide in ethanol. So I added slowly 50 milliliters of water. Um, careful doing that because um, the water can. It can get real hot and boil the water and splash acid. So I, I added it very slowly and started heating it. And the temperature inside the reaction vessel is about 45 degrees Celsius right now. And I'm starting to get some bubbling inside there. So I think the reaction is starting. So the first distal began coming over right at 38 degrees, uh, which is what I would expect because the boiling point of bromoethane uh, is listed at between 38 and 39 degrees. It's only been 23 minutes or so since I added the water and began to heat the mixture. And it's taken on quite a, quite a bit darker tone. Um, you know, it kind of looks black on the camera, but it's actually a dark amber color. It looks, looks a lot like strong uh, black tea.
30 minutes after adding the uh, the heat and water, the reaction vessel is bubbling nicely. <clears throat> and the distillate is coming over at about a drop a second. So about an hour and a half into the reaction, uh, the rate was getting kind of high and the drip rate had gone above one drip a second. So I turned the heat off and that was about 20 minutes ago and it back down to about a drip a second is where I'd like to keep it. Um, I had to switch out receiving flask. This one was getting relatively full and I also added an additional uh, 25 mils of water to the new receiving flask. And you can see the uh, biphasic mixture there. The uh, ethyl bromide will be on the bottom and that's the water cap there. So about two hours and 15 minutes into the reaction and at this point I turn the heat back on because the drip rate slowed significantly <clears throat> and it picked back up to about a drip a second. Um, all of the sodium bromide has dissolved and I'm, the temperature has steadily risen. I'm distilling now right about 50 degrees and I'm going to continue this until either no more distillate comes over or the temperature reaches 70 degrees. So as soon as the temperature in the still head reached 70 degrees, I uh, cut off the heat and I think it's, the whole thing took about three hours to get to that point. The, uh, the final solution in the reaction flask is it's actually much lighter than it was during the reaction. It's probably hard to tell on this um, camera, but... Alright, I've transferred my distillate um, from the two receiving flasks to, to a separatory funnel, and now I'm going to drain off the organic layer, uh, which is the bottom layer in this case, and reserve that. I'm now going to wash the organic layer with 30 milliliters of a 10% sodium bicarbonate solution. And I'm going to put a uh, stopper in this and agitate it, remembering to vent often. And once again, the organic layer is reserved, and now I'm going to wash it with two 30 mil portions of cold distilled water. Using the same procedure as before, um, shaking and venting often. The wash product is then transferred to a 100 milliliter um, round bottom flask containing about 5 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride. The dried product is then gravity filtered. The filter product is then transferred to a paired brown glass bottle. 
My final yield was 107.9 grams of ethyl bromide, or 0.99 moles, uh, which constitutes an 83.9% yield based on ethanol. Um, be sure to store ethyl bromide in a dark bottle and also in a lab freezer. So thanks for watching.